Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. In this quick guitar tricks we're looking at tuplets, specifically playing 9 notes in the space of 8. I've covered tuplets and polyrhythms before using 5 and 7 notes which you can check out with the card up there. If you're totally new to this topic I would really suggest giving that a watch first, but these videos are more sort of like a foot in the door type of lesson rather than a really comprehensive dive into it. In a nutshell, instead of playing straight 8th notes as characterised by this circle, we're playing 9 as shown by the circle. So here the circle represents one bar, the segment showing how we can split up into the standard 8th notes or the tuplet line. You'll notice the size of the circle, e.g. the length of the bar or the tempo, is the same for both. So in order to play the tuplets of 9, we have to play slightly faster than a straight 1 add 2 add 3 add 4 add 8th note beat. This is where it gets tricky. The first thing we're going to do is create a 9 note melody. Obviously you can create anything, but the one I'm going with is this. And a bit slower. Using a word with the same amount of syllables as this, so 9 syllables can be quite useful. So in keeping with my other video on I did in tuplets, we could stick with a hippopotamus theme and we could have very happy hippopotamus. Very happy hippopotamus. Very happy hippopotamus. I have recently found that a university works well for five. University. Uh, you could do who needs university for seven. Who needs university. And we could have for this nine that we're doing a university education. University education. University education. So that might not help you, but just to internalise it initially, it, it might be pretty useful. I do find these things very handy. The other thing you might run into here is that we're going to have to do a combination of inside and outside picking because it's an odd number of groups. So I've done an exercise to help you out with this, which I'll link to with the card up there, that little I. But basically, if you're starting on an upstroke and we're alternate picking, because we end on an upstroke there, we're going to start the next group of nine on a down which means we inside pick. So outside picking means essentially you're crossing the strings on the outside of them. Inside picking, you're crossing the strings on the inside. It's a slightly different wrist movement, so you might favour one more than the other. This isn't a huge hurdle, but it's definitely something to be aware of. The next thing we can look at is kind of breaking down this set of nine notes into something that's a bit more recognisable or a bit more manageable. So this isn't ideal in the long run, but it's a kind of foot in the door type thing it's, it's worthwhile doing. So what we can do is think of it as a set of uh, three triplets. So we could have one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three here. So three triplets. The next step there is to stamp your foot on the first of each of these beats of three. So we'd have, or you can say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, this is just kind of internalising this group of nine. What we're trying to do is make it feel a little bit more familiar. And the triplet thing maybe isn't too bad because 9-8 isn't that uncommon a time signature as weird time signatures go. Or you could think of this as triplets in 3-4. The next step I'm going to suggest is just stamping on the very first beat. Rather than splitting it into three groups of three, we're going to try and start to see it as a bit of a whole. Although even though we're doing this, you might still want to chunk it. So we're just thinking about the first note, that's where we're accenting. But to make it easier to digest, you might still want to think in groups of three. So you might want to think about these three notes, these three, and then these three. As a different kind of group, you want to chunk it into different sections. You could think of six and three, then these. You might be able to think of it as just one group of nine. To be honest, I'm probably thinking of kind of six and then three. That's probably what I'm going with, even though I'm just focusing on that first beat. These little ideas like chunking can make it easier to get to grips with. Obviously, when you're playing this stuff in the long term, you want to be comfortable just kind of ripping into it. But we're just learning here. It is early stages. So the next thing I would suggest to do is find a tempo that's comfortable to play this at by just using a tap tempo. So you can go online or if you've got an app, you can just kind of tap in the tempo that you're doing. And it'll likely be quite slow because you're just stamping your foot on the first beat. which can be a challenge in itself to play over. It might take a few goes to get it right, so I'm going to stick my click track on now. So 
So you could probably hear there it took me a couple of goes to sync into the tempo because I have been playing it much slower. My metronome is set to 40 BPM and if I went any slower than that I would have a real hard time kind of working out where the actual beat is. So I, I kind of left that in because this is how I, I would get to grips with it to, to start off with. You will play it probably out of time and just listen to the metronome and make sure you get in time and then start to internalise it that way. What can really help as a side note is closing your eyes. This sounds stupid, but if you don't have any uh, visual information to process, it can make tasks like this easier that involve a lot of concentration. If you're enjoying this content, let me know with a like and a comment. These things do really help out the channel in terms of the YouTube algorithm. If you want more of this kind of thing in your feed, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to enable all notifications so you never miss out on new content. What I would suggest is spending a bit of time with this group in line, making sure you're comfortable playing it to a click track, and then what we'll look at doing is applying it to a full scale. So we'll be going through a G major in groups of nine. Just like that. So what I'm going to do now is stick on the click track. Again, this will just be accenting the first beat to make life a little bit easier. So hopefully that made sense what I was doing there. What I'm going to do now is go through the scale shape again. At the end of it, I'll wait, there'll be another count in, and each time we repeat it, there'll be a bit more going on rhythmically, just so you can get a feel about how this uh, odd meter feels, for lack of a better term, against a slightly more regular drum beat. The final thing I'm going to give here as an example is an audio file of uh, these two rhythms together. So we're going to have straight eighth notes on a low note, and then we'll have the kind of ninth tuplets on a high note. This will give you an idea of if you want to try and pick them together with your thumb and your finger, how it would sound. Alright, final little bonus bit here, so thanks for sticking around. What I'm going to do is apply this to a sweep. So we're going to have a sweep uh, that's just a group of nine. It's essentially a G major. If you know your kind of normal G major sweep, 
<laughs> it's almost identical as that, except we're missing out a note. We're going to come up and go to here. And instead of going back down to this fret, we're just going to do that. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then repeat. was Tuplet specifically groups of nine. This has been Quick Guitar Tricks, and that's the playlist there. For more polyrhythm stuff, check out this. But yeah, hit subscribe to keep up to date with the channel. Leave me a comment, share with your fellow musicians, and enable notifications by ringing that little bell on the side if you feel so inclined. Cheers, guys.